we're, what are we here for? The ultimate dealer's guide to lead follow-up and conversion, okay? So how um, can you fight like a pro and never miss another lead again? Let's first go over a, a few housekeeping rules. Um, silence your cell phone. And it's really not gonna disturb because we can't hear you guys are on mute. Anything you say pretty much has to go through the chat. Um, but just more than anything, so you can have your focus over here. I think you guys will learn a lot from today's presentation. That's my hope. Um, I value your time. I know I'm competing for your attention with a lot of other things. Um, so I promise if you're focused on here, you're gonna get a lot out of it. So with two, close out any Facebook tab or anything um, that may distract you. If you own, run, um, a power sports marine or RV dealership. You could be the GM, the owner, or the marketing director. And you're serious about handling your leads from the internet and getting the most return on investment for um, your marketing dollars. The next five to 60 minutes are going to be a game changer. Now, here's what you're going to discover today. We're going to talk about how to quickly and effortless, effortlessly follow up with qualified leads and maximize your return on investment from your marketing dollars while you're at it. How to optimize your sales process to your marketing in order to boost revenue and profits in the process. So a lot of you have probably heard, you know, that marketing and sales should be in lockstep. That is actually very true. And that's part of what I wanna show you today. So the next big bullet point of what you're gonna learn is how to use lead follow-up and automation technology so that your team can focus on what really matters, which is selling more units getting and getting referrals from existing happy customers. That's what we like to call here at Beyond Creative and Dealer Lead Pro, sell more fun. We like to help dealers sell fun and adventure. So why listen to me? Like I mentioned to you guys, I extremely value your time and it's a lot to ask for, you know, to spend Tuesday um, early afternoon for those of you that are from the West Coast morning, a late morning for you. Um, and so why should you listen? What should, why should you take your time and listen to me? Well, here are the boring, the, the, I'll give you the boring and the more exciting aspect of it. I would say the boring one in bullet points is I've got over 15 years of experience in internet marketing, particularly for dealerships, okay? I came from the automotive. So later on, I'll tell you why that's important. Uh, big, big experience in the outdoor industry in general, in general, particularly in power sports, boating, and recreational fishing. Now, you guys may have come across my column in uh, power sports business and boating industry. It's called, um, it's on digital marketing. And uh, I have done together with, you know, uh, Beyond Creative collaborations with industry leaders such as Dealer News, Mark Shield, um, and Laud Vantage, among others, okay? So here's some of the dealerships that we currently help. Um, you may be familiar with some of them. Uh, but before I jump into that, and really, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this slide. What I really want to tell you about is a little bit more about um, how I got into this space. I gave you the little bit of the boring story, right? Uh, the bullet points. Let me give you the story behind it really, really quick. Um, if some of you are here today wondering how to really get more out of your internet leads, why you're not getting more out of it, how to maximize your return on investment for the dollars you're spending advertising on Google or for your search engine optimization, whatever the case may be. And some of you perhaps are like, this can't be that I'm closing, you know, this little people from all of the tons of leads that are coming in. Or some of you may wonder, man, there's so many leads to deal with and I can't follow up with all of them. Um, that frustration, that particular thing that you may be living through. I lived through it years ago when I was the marketing director in-house for one of the largest power sports dealers in the country. And what occurred to me during that time was that there was, there was an enormous disparity between automotive dealers because that's where I had started my career. I was actually selling Mini Coopers and Camaros and really cool cars on eBay when people were like, what? It was back in 2005. Um, and that was kind of still impressive to people back then. A lot of that has become commonplace nowadays, right? But what I found out as a marketing director later in-house for you know uh, the, this particular dealership was that oh my God, it was so difficult still to be able to um, close, be able to, to 
get from all these leads that are being generated from the internet to actually be able to get them to come into the store and close. And so it's a, it's a very real problem and phenomenon that the dealership across the country are going through. And I'm just here to talk to you guys about what we did to fix that problem. And that's what the passion for me came about and where Beyond Creative was born and why I'm here talking to you guys. So let me just show you a little bit real quick. This very quick clip, probably about 20, 30 seconds of some of our happy customers, but I, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but just this is something that just kind of brightens my day. Looks like we need some sound there, Joe. Okay, so it looks like uh, you guys may not be hearing the sound. So I'm guessing it, we're just gonna skip over it. It's not that big of a deal. There we go. Instead of me uh, finagling with the, uh, with the whole technology, right? Can't live with it, can't live without it. <laughs> Uh, precisely one of the things that we're going to talk about today. So why are we here? How does that tie in with regards to what I'm mentioning to you guys is my pain point and having solved that, that riddle of the follow-up process and internet marketing and all of that. Uh, the problem that the way that I described it and I essentially um, broke it down and what helped me come up with the formula was that essentially over 60% uh, percent of inbound traffic bounces. So meaning that more than more than six out of 10 people that visit your dealer's website would just like, you know, and just go back out and that's it. Like you never got anything from them or anything like that. Now, out of the people that actually convert and you do get a lead notification about, um, more than 90% of them that submit it don't actually convert to either an appointment um, or a sale. Right. And then last but not least, and I'll go into this in detail on a little bit, is that 78% of dealers lose customers after the just the first six seconds of not responding to them. What does this equal out to, guys? It's just huge, enormous uh, missed revenue opportunity. It's a lot of money that's being left on the table. Now, I want to share with you, let me just get a, a sip real quick. I want to show you a real life example, real case of a client of ours and the kind of generation, and this is funny because this kind of, it also goes to the, the development of, our, of our, our company and our journey. We kind of always started out with let's like managed marketing services, but we saw the immense need. And, and it's about this slide of that, that dealers have for a follow-up process in general. And so when we realized results like these that you see on the screen, with over 34,000 calls, um, you know, lead calls generated. Um, you could see in the graph there how they started out and eventually how they climbed up when we onboarded them. Um, you could, we can all agree from looking at this that the marketing worked, right? That's, that's just the numbers. It just is what it is. Um, but the question is, did it matter? And that's a big deal. Um, so where does, what road does that lead us? Well, the reason why I asked the question, did it matter, is because the marketing worked, but how many of those people that we attracted during the marketing process were we able to communicate with and eventually help and put them into something fun and change their lives for the better um, by getting them on you know, the motorcycle or personal watercraft or ATV of their dreams or boat of their dreams, right? So that takes down the return on investment um, uh, on BDC. Why? Because for you to know, to be able to help um, as many people as possible, and to, which in turn for you will equal out to something beneficial, right? Which is selling more units. You need to not necessarily pour more money into the marketing. As a matter of fact, some of you are probably hearing from your OEMs that you're spending too much money in marketing. Why is that? Because there's a point where no matter how much money you throw at um, marketing, um, it won't be efficient. And you're just going to keep spinning your wheels and wasting the money. So what you want to do is fix something at a level where it's a smaller gear and you need to put in there the right ratio so that you can um, 
reap a lot more out of the money you're already putting in. So again, that brings us right back to the heart of return on investment, ROI. And it's going to depend on a few things, right? It's going to depend on in-house versus outsourced BDC strategy. It, uh, this, now we're talking about ROI specifically for BDC. At this moment, I'm not talking about ROI for marketing, okay? It, it will tie in, but it, it's, it's at a later time. So we talk about, okay, just to backtrack a little bit, in-house versus outsourced BDC strategy, then the amount of leads being generated are going to come into play because you need to figure out either bullet point number four, which is how many dedicated reps um, ratio to leads uh, generated you're going to have, or some outsourcing companies for BDC will charge you either based on leads or tiered based on a bulk of leads or whatever the case may be. Another aspect is the kind of software that you're using um, and the configuration that you're having, if you have access to training or not. And then the cost to generate the leads, right? That kind of is the, the end that kind of ties into the BDC uh, return on investment. So What's the cost of a bad BDC strategy? And this is an important big part of the presentation. Um, give me a thumbs up if you guys can still hear me okay. I don't know if you guys can see me or not, if you see my, um, my face on the top of the screen, but if not, that's all cool. As long as you guys can still see the presentation and you guys can still hear me, then it's all good. Awesome. Okay, cool, Ray, thank you so much. So the cost of a bad BDC strategy, kind of sucks. Um, you're going to have lost web form submissions. And that aspect of it, although more related to marketing, what happens is when the BDC uh, component and marketing are not in sync, you're going to lose more um, of the of what's submitted on your website. A lot of them are not going to be reached out to. A lot of them will fall by the cracks. They won't be reached out uh, fast enough. And we're getting, we'll get into um, a lot of this in a minute. Um, but that's for bullet point number one. On bullet point number two is customers drop after the first 60 seconds of not responding. Now, er, let's halt there for a second. I'll go into more detail about this in, in the next few slides or so, but that's huge. I mean, guys, that's, that's a crazy statistic. I mean, you're thinking about that a lot of people will just not become your customer if you didn't do something within the first minute of their uh, inquiry being submitted. It's huge. So the next thing is a slow response time, which obviously equals to a poor user experience. Um, next is an insufficient number of touches uh, on the customer. That's all gonna lead to a poor connect rate with your leads. And when you do connect with them, you're gonna have a crappy appointment ratio and tons of missed opportunities. And again, what does this equal out to? Tons and tons of missed revenue opportunity. So let me take a breath and also <laughs> another uh, sip of my drink. So let that marinate for a little bit, guys. Believe it or not, 78% of dealers <clears throat> lose customers when they take longer than 60 seconds to get back to them. So this is goes back to that bullet point I was talking about on the last slide. That's huge, guys. So you're saying, you mean to tell me that many people all of a sudden I lose because, it, yes, like your rates diminish. Here's one of the, <clears throat> the graphs that just kind of tell it all, right, with regards to response time. This is just statistic based, guys. This is based on like a huge majority of people um, that are that are being studied with regards to their interaction with companies on the web, right? If you take, if you within a minute reply, your conversion ratio goes up to 391 percent. Minute two, 160. Minute three, you now start hitting like a 100 percent, which is a lot more of like just like. Okay, regular, right? Like, okay, that's a good percentage. But then look at the decrease. 30 minutes, it exponentially starts going down. One hour, 30%. And I personally know of a lot of dealers that I speak to that they think it's perfectly fine to get back to people, especially with a lot of dealers that are closed on Sundays and Mondays, and they have nothing in place for BDC and follow-up. And they're getting back to some of these guys flipping, you know, over 48 hours later. Look at the percentage of conversion rate for 24 hours. I mean, you're looking at 
You know, it's, it's crazy. So let me put this in a little bit of a different way with regards to that last graph and everything. Over 50% of sale, of sales is what that's supposed to say. Go to the dealership that responds first. That is insane. Now, let's move the conversation along to be a little bit more focused uh, minded as opposed to problem driven or problem minded. And let's talk about OE secret KPIs, right? I don't know if, you know, I, I deal with, with dealerships that from all walks. So dealerships that um, essentially are either just a, a single line, you know, that they like, there's a few Harley dealers that are, have joined us here today as an example. Um, and Harley dealers, they just mostly for the most part, there's very few exceptions in the country. They represent just one brand, right? Um, but that's also not the case with multi-line power sports dealerships. Um, so I see, uh, you know, dealerships that represent just one brand to very many. And what I see as far as the help that they get from OEMs, it's all, it's, it's all over the map. Okay, some OEMs do a lot better of a job at communicating what these uh, KPIs are, and also uh, give you. Uh, instrumental training and guidance that becomes critical for you to know where to look, what to do. And some of the reason why some of you may be here is because you're lacking that support from the OEMs, right? So that's the reason for this slide, making this um, as accessible to, uh, to, your, um, to you guys so that you know, and, and for those of you, by the way, KPI means uh, key performance indicators. Thank you, Steve. Um, and those are things that we essentially measure, right? But not just that we measure, but also that we hold to a particular importance so that we understand that we're inching every minute closer to our goal. That's the very particular importance of KPIs. So what are the main ones that dealerships look uh, look at when they're studying uh sorry that oems look like look at when they're studying a dealership okay response time right we went over that with the last few slides this is a little bit new in the webinar right now which is number of touch points how many times are you reaching out and the, and and then within that right is also through how many different mediums are you reaching out so how many different channels are you using that's an important one What's your connect rate? So how many of these people that you, how many of, of uh, total on the leads that you received were you able to actually communicate with? From there, what is your appointment ratio? From those that you were able to communicate, how many were you able to bring into, uh, were you actually able to book an appointment with? And then number five, how many of them actually showed up, okay? <clears throat> so those are really, really important ones. Now, did you guys know, and some of you that are in management here, we're probably gonna get a chuckle out of this <laughs> because this may be one of those like um, painful things to talk about for you, or you're gonna roll your eyes when you see this, which is that sales reps make on average 75.2% fewer contact attempts to leads than they actually think they do. So these are from metrics that we get from dashboards. Like if we have a dealership that just says, okay, this is the only system we're using for FOP. We're, we're making calls, sending text, emails, blah, 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 everything through here. And all of our sales reps use that platform, you know, to do it. Um, then when asked, when they were asked, so how many follow-up attempts did you make for uh, that lead? 75% of them will tell you that their number was higher than it really was. Meaning more than three out of 10 sales reps actually make too few attempts and they don't really know it, okay? Now here's part of the reason why that's important and why it's critical. This chart um, isn't just to follow up attempts like you see there on the left-hand side, it's particularly with follow up attempts to um, the uh, follow up attempts via phone. Okay, and this there are individual graphs that also speak the same uh, on this point when it comes to how many times did you try to email, how many times did you try to text, um, but this point in particular is how many times did you try to call, and so I'll go into some of the solutions to help really alleviate this issue and this problem. Did you know that the average sales rep 
or I would say sales rep on average gave up after just 1.3 contact attempts via phone um, to a lead. It's crazy. And the total number that's needed is, is much higher than that. You're talking about on average seven to eight. So by this point, a lot of you guys are probably like, you know, fire hose on the face. And this is kind of how you're feeling right now. If that's the case, I'm sorry, but I got to make it just a little bit worse so I can make a point. Let's talk about common symptoms of a bad BDC, and then we'll try to refocus the conversation and make it more solution driven, right? Although some of you that are up on the call today have probably picked up on a lot of the solutions as I've been going through the um, uncomfortableness of the consequences of, bad, of a bad BDC strategy. So what does that look like? Well, Overcomplicated and needlessly expensive software and technologies. Um, a lot of you here with me today um, probably know um, that you know you get tons of calls of people trying to sell you the newest and shiniest object and all of that. And some of these, you know, they promise the world and that it's a you know it's a software that'll solve all your problems and it's a software that's either overly complicated expensive you're burning through a bunch of money and then never ends up getting used because maybe the sales team never adopted it um so that's a typical thing that i hear from speaking to the dealers all across the world now ah oh, let's take a let's breathe that in for a second here's what you don't want look at all these crazy softwares and you know sources and all of that and how complicated it could be this is what you want to stay away from and what you don't want it to look like what's another typical um symptom uh of a bad bdc strategy well seemingly low quality leads now this ties back to some of the bullet points that i spoke about earlier which is touch points how many touch points and how many different channels did you try to communicate um buy and a lot of times your sales guys you probably hear this all the time that was bad quality this and that bad quality lead but in reality it's because what needs to be done out of the outreach for responding to an incoming uh, internet lead is not being done so struggling with booked appointment rate and no shows that's a big one right so once you're finally able to like, oh my gosh wow i got lucky i got this guy on the phone um, what does your book deployment ratio look like? Um, and how many of those just didn't show, even though they said, yeah, 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 I'm going. How many of those leads, uh, you know, look to you like they were ghosting you or they just had like very little engagement. Like maybe they just said enough to shut you up. <laughs> like, yeah. And that's it, you know? So that's also part of not being, I'd say, I you have probably heard me say in the past about, uh, meeting people where they're at. Um, and that's uh, an important part of this. And using technology and using follow up automation and market automation is a critical component that I'm going to talk about in a little bit that's going to alleviate this. That it's going to now you're going to feel like, oh man, people aren't ghosting me. And the reason why they're not ghosting you or it may feel like they're not ghosting you anymore is because you met them where they were at in a meaningful way. So I know some of you, you know, here may feel very uh, stuck between a, a rock and a hard place because if you're in, ma in management right now, you probably hear from, uh, you know, you probably are rolling your eyes at this slide because you're you hear this from your staff all the time, right? or from your sales staff in particular. Like they're feeling overwhelmed. You really expect to do these many calls a day. You really expect us to send these many emails a day, and then you in, in management, you're stuck between like. But yeah, that's what the OEM's telling me. You know, that's what that they're telling me. We're not closing enough from our internet leads. They're telling me that you know we don't have a good ratio. We're telling me we're not sending enough emails. And then you're saying that, and it's like a point of contention constantly between you and your sales team, right? Um, and so you feel like you're stuck between a rock and a, and a hard place. Well, that's where now whew, we take a little bit of a fresh air, um, and in. in and, and we start driving this into being more solution focused. And we talk about the three main BDC success, success strategies for dealers. Now, I truly really have <clears throat> a list of 10 big ones that are you know, important for it. But for the interest of time, I'm gonna give you the three main key ones to make you successful um, at it. If you do want to get the detail for the other ones, I'll be more than happy to give it to you. Um, 
I'll show you later on in the slide how to get a hold of me so that I can just give you the rest. But for the interest of time, because there's a lot to cover, um, I'm putting, I'm giving you the three main ones today. Now, what I'm about to show you, please use for the um, for the forces of good and not evil. I'm going to show you <clears throat> solutions and uh, use of automation and certain key points that you need to have in place um, for your system so that it can it can kiss, you know, it could keep it simple, stupid. Um, even though it's not easy to implement this stuff, it doesn't have to or it isn't really complicated. It just take setup and dedication of time to and research of it. Um, and once implemented properly, um, you are gonna be able to replicate this and scale it. And that's the beauty of it, right? So let's talk about number one, super critical, the outreach cadence. What does that mean, guys? It's essentially the pace and the structure of your outreach. So I'm going to give you the ideal pace and touch points that you need to maximize your dealer's revenue. Why do I go straight to revenue? Because remember, what we do here is going to directly affect your bottom line because it's tied to your cost and it's tied to how many total units you sell. <clears throat> so number one is automate calls to your dealership when a new lead comes in. What does that mean? Well, if the lead comes in during business hours, which the vast majority of leads do, by the way, guys, have it so it automates a phone call. There are, there are various, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, software out in the market that do this. One of them, for instance, is Dealerly Pro, and I can go into more details later on, um, but that you can automate a phone call so that when a lead comes in, it calls your store and it says, hey, uh, you know, uh, hey, uh, Caliente Harley, you have got a lead on line one. Their name is Joe, press one to be connected. Guess what? What it does then is it now when the either the sales rep or the receptionist presses one, then the system dials the lead. So it's an immediate form of connecting the dealership with the lead, even if the lead didn't pick up the phone. Super important. Another critical two, two and three are very critical: autoresponder emails and text messages. Text, particularly only if it's during business hours. The autoresponder email is a given. These three things will allow you to seamlessly be able to contact the, um, the lead, the person making the inquiry, within 60 seconds with multiple touch points. Notice, guys, that's a key component of it. You're reaching out with three different methods, okay? Now, there are more that we can implement into a sequence, but I'm going to give you, for the sake of simplicity today, the main important ones, which are phone, uh, text messages and email. Now, the next important aspect to this, to the cadence and the pace and the touch points is how many more times and over how long you need to reach out to them. It's going to be at least in four to five more emails and four to five more text messages with a day or two in between timed, you know, so you get a total, uh, total time span of roughly between six or seven days in total that you're reaching out. Another important thing is that what you're saying within these messages. Believe it or not, guys, these messages don't have to be overcomplicated. I see a lot of dealers that put like a freaking novel <laughs> emails, and that's just a little bit too much. If you are going to do that, you have to make sure that what you're saying is very compelling if you're going to make a long email. So number five is carefully crafted messaging is super, super critical and important. Number two is the outreach automation. Use technology to do the hard work for you. This ties right back to what I was telling you guys uh, regarding um, <clears throat> the being stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? And like your sales staff feels so frustrated um, and they feel like you're asking too much of them, that they're overwhelmed, whatever the case may be, there's a solution. That solution is automation. We're gonna automate how many times we're gonna reach out. We're gonna automate what we're gonna say and believe me, guys, although there's no such thing as set it and forget it, there is a way, there is a better way out there that with very little work, you can get a ton of the stuff done and that it looks genuine and it looks authentic as opposed to sounding fake. It's 2020, folks. You know, the internet has been around for how long? Technology moves at the speed of light. We have technology nowadays that very smartly 
uh, patches information so that the person can feel, truly feel they're being communicated by with somebody at the other end. Now, of course, the process can never, at least to this point, to be done properly, be done by a robot or a machine or artificial intelligence, okay? There's no such thing as set it and forget it. That kind of goes back to tying it to that, why I said that. But do we use technology to handle the hard, the hard work for you in the outreach, okay? Now, once you put in automation, one of the things that you want to do that's important as far as the solution is to make sure that you have a reliable integration, meaning that you've got a ton of lead sources you got to worry about, right? You want a system that is going to marry all of your lead sources. So your OEM, you want it to marry your website leads. You want it to marry your cycle trader leads. You want it to marry your Rolic leads all into one platform and dashboard. And you want that solution to be seamless and you want it to be reliable so that they're all going in one place and they're either round robining um, or doing what you need them to do essentially. Now, why is it important to have it centralized in one location um, and, and to have multiple channels um, within that one location? Because the use of multiple communication channels increases your success rate by 161%. So we're using just phone, it's like down the tube. If you're using just email, forget it. If you're using just text, forget it. That may be a little bit of your better chances than the others if you're using just text, but there's no silver bullet, guys. So the one central system for all really boils down to um, being able to, in one central place, have as many communication systems and platforms connected to it. So as an example, Dealerly Pro leverages face, um, uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, direct one-on-one -on -one emails, it can do phone calls, inbound and outbound. Um, it can also, did I mention Facebook Messenger? I believe so, uh, text messages, I don't know if I mentioned. Um, and you can do email blasts. So all of your communication in one place is gonna help you be more successful. Now, what is the actual elements look like with, re with regards to what you're gonna be putting in place? Um, looking at putting in the automatic lead notification that I mentioned. Within the sequence, you want to include voicemail drops as well, ringless voicemail drops. So what that means is if the lead came in outside of business hours, then you can have it, aside the two ringless voicemails that you should have, you, um, you can have it uh, make a phone call, but it hangs up before. And so it doesn't actually ring on the side of the lead and it drops the voicemail. And then that person can listen to it you know, at a later time, either when they wake up or right then and there, but you didn't disturb something outside of business hours. During business hours, um, you use it outside of the two ringless voicemail drops on number two, because what your team can do is when that initial uh, autom automated call from step one goes through, and let's just say that the salesperson wasn't able to get a, the uh, uh, hold of the lead on the line, they can safely hang up and the system can have it drop them a voicemail. Um, you know, that will pertain to that particular sales rep, okay, saying, hey, this is so and so, um, I'm trying to reach out to you, blah, 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 blah. And all of those things can be pre recorded in a manner where they just have to like, press one or just hang up safely, and it just drops the voicemail. Uh, additionally, five to six automated texts, which I mentioned prior, at least six email touches. And of course, and I put it here again on purpose, because I need to emphasize a carefully crafted message, okay. So what's number three, super important for you guys to know and, um, and see uh, and understand that what you're doing is going on the right path um, and is working. It, reporting, 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 reporting. So insights and analytic intelligence. These are important components um, for information that's uh, going to give you key data on your efforts. So you need a complete lead reporting system that now ties back in to what we started the webinar, uh, what we started talking about at the beginning of the webinar, right? Which is marketing and how to leverage your marketing. So at this point, what you really need is something that ties in, okay, what was my total investment for, for advertising on such and such platform? 
then you've got Google, you've got Facebook, you've got your search engine optimization, you've got CycleTrader and ties that in. And then it's telling you from that total investment, how many leads I get, what was my cost per lead, right? Um, and then you start breaking it down further. So from my cost per lead and the total number of leads, how many of those people were we able to get on, you know, were we able to reach one way or another? I shouldn't say on the phone, like an actual connection where the person now responded to you. And then from there, right? How many of those people you were to um, contact one way or another that they actually replied? Were you able to close for an appointment? How many of those didn't show? And then how many of those did you close that you, um, that you turn into sales and, and units that you moved out the door. So you want a system that incorporates all of that. Here's a little bit of just a snapshot of one of the parts in the back end of Dealerly Pro that help with this. There's, there are other reports that I didn't want to include in here to not make your eyes like, you know, go up into the back of your skull. Um, simple example on like marketing sequences, how many total people that we add, how many people completed the sequences, how many of those replied, you want those percentages. So being able to see that at a granular and a, a high overview is super critically important. Now, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and do a simple recap um, so that I can open it up for question and answer um, and I can you know, interact with you guys um, <clears throat> on what we've seen, any new questions that you think I didn't cover, uh, or that may have come up from the material that we see. So as a dealer, right, what you want is a system that's technically simple, fast, uh, and budget conscious to, uh, to implement. You want something that you can scale at, uh, with unlimited potential, right? Um, for an unlimited amount of customers and that you can do so, you can scale it quickly and inexpensively. You also want um, a system that addresses the main elements of profitable lead management. So here's how you can get that system. Going with the top things that we talked about that we just went over, you wanna implement a quality lead gen system that cherry picks the best prospects. This is where automation comes into play and does a lot of the work for your sales staff because your sales staff is, you're right when you complain, if you're a manager here and you're complaining about your sales staff and they're not following up, vast majority of you in, in, you know, in management are gonna be right that the team is not following up enough. Now to their defense, it's also a lot of work, right? So number one is implementing that technology and that system that cherry picks the best prospects. Because what happens is when you know you have your ducks in a row and you're following up within the first 60 seconds and all of that, then what's gonna subsequently happen is that you're gonna get the good ones, good quality ones, and it's cherry picking the, the ones that are actually engaged with your company. So number two, you're gonna implement a BDC strategy that suits your dealer's optimum lead follow-up and selling strategy. And that's where the cadence and what we talked about comes in, understanding how with the metrics that I gave you guys as far as the minimum things and the time spans and all of that that you need, how do you now turn that to be personalized to your dealership and make it work for everyone? And three is focus on, focus on the low hanging fruit um, <clears throat> and use marketing automation to give you the highest return on investment so you can leverage the marketing knowledge you're already spending. A lot of you, you know, were already like had so many leads that you got over the summer, but you were like overwhelmed by it. And it, that ties right back to this aspect of things. So here's what happens when the right BDC um, strategy is implemented. You will dominate your local market without question. There's no doubt about it in my mind. And you know why? Because it's kind of like that Italian economy rule. I forget his name. I'm sorry for the ignorance, but um, it's the 80-20 rule. You know, that 20% of your efforts give you 80% of your results. So it's kind of very similar, it translates to a lot of aspects in life. And 20% of the dealers, the top of dealerships, the top performing ones are the ones that are taking a greater chunk of the revenue. Those guys are the ones that dominate their local market. So you guys can be in that realm too if, if you aren't already there. Now, you now can start reinvesting dollars 
to scale what you just implemented. The beauty of that is that you're not bound by kinks in the system. You literally can just grow as much as you want. It's going to really be up to you. You can also start the process of implementing this in-house with help of someone like me or someone like my team. So once you have this lead follow-up and customer acquisition system in place, there's no limit to how much or how fast your dealership, your dealership can go. It's really just solely up to you. If this customer acquisition system is something that you guys want to implement for your dealer, then let's have a chat. About it. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, no obligation on anything. Uh, I'm here really just to help out dealers. But of course, if we end up working together, then I'm super confident that we can help implement a BDC system for your dealer. I can also, again, if we're not a right fit for each other and it doesn't work out, I'll be more than thrilled to give you, um, you know, any resources that I have to my advantage, even give of my time to share solutions with you. So um, I would say that the first thing to do would be to book a call and my team's putting, uh, let's see, the link. Yeah, my, uh, so our team just put the link on the chat so you guys can grab the can grab that to uh, get some time, book some time from my calendar. My email is also on, on the screen too. Now, <clears throat> I would say to make sure that if, if this is something that you're really thinking like, yeah, this could really be for us, don't wait around, you know, two, three months. Let me see the beginning of the year because what we're going to do is um, keeping our system in, in mind and our scalability capacities at the moment. We are um, only taking on 10 new dealers for this program. And the last time that I did put it out there, it took like less than an hour to fill all of our spots. Um, so again, just make sure you could go to the link. I think uh, the team just put on the email on the screen too. So you could grab my email address from there, joe at go beyond creative, or just do the link on the screen um, to book the call. Now, here's the reason why I'm only taking 10 dealers at a time, right? And some of you may kind of have wondered that. And it's essentially for focus and dedication. And it means just exactly that. I can only do this with 10 dealers at a time at the moment right now. So the sooner that we get on the phone, the, the better the chances that we end up working together. So again, go beyond creative.com slash schedule. So um, one quick thing that I want to make sure you guys know about is if you do book with me, I will make sure I have a really, really cool worksheet to kind of figure out if uh, an outsourced, uh, essentially a worksheet that you could just answer a few questions and it will let you know if the right fit for you is an in-house BDC or an outsourced BDC. And it also goes through a lot of other important aspects that your dealership needs to be looking as far as what's important to think about um, you know, in order for me to get my follow up properly. So if you guys book, uh, do book with me today, I'll, I'll make sure to um, give you that resource uh, for free.